I've decided I'm going to do a video series on raising my next puppy, my keeper from the ginger and brick litter. And I filmed the entire intro without introducing the series. Not saying anything about it. So, I'm just going to uh, upload some videos. I don't know if it's going to be weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. Just depends what I get of raising my next puppy and watching her grow and develop. As we already know from all my other videos, they aren't going to be terribly high quality, but I hope I hope they'll help somebody anyway, and even if not, it's just my journal of raising my puppy. Hi puppy. Do you want in the shot? I finally decided which puppy I'm going to keep, and it's not the one I wanted because the stud owner had first pick and he took her. And I also did not get the genetic test results back in time. I didn't get them until almost a week later. And out of the four dogs they tested, the three females and... You weren't supposed to come on yet! Lizzie! Anyway, so out of the three females I tested, Foxy, Peggy, and Lizzie, well, and Jasper, and I tested Jasper too, the one I kept is the carrier. Well, it doesn't really matter. I know Jasper's clear so I can breed him to her and then I'll just have to make sure if I ever use an outside stud that when I choose is clear. And she did not want to stay out of the frame until her selected time. So I guess she is in the frame. I kept Lizzie. Hi Lizzie. She's a pretty uh, unique looking puppy anyway. Sue, who I planned on keeping. I mean, she's awful pretty. I still think she's prettier than Liz, but she's not as unique. Huh, Liz? Liz is actually a tricolor. I don't know if you can see that little bit of brown right above her eye right there. If she had more black to show it in, she would be uh, a lot more of a tricolor. But she hardly has any black in the areas where tri would normally show up, like the paws right here, the face, and on the back. Usually around the tail they would have some, but she's white back there too, so she does not have a lot of brown, but she is a tricolor. I chose her over Peggy and Foxy because, well, Foxy is really high strung and really energetic, a fireball, but she's not confident. She's very timid, I found out. When she first started coming around, uh, when they started letting him out of the pool and stuff, it seemed that she was most outgoing, most bold, most confident. But she was just the most energetic. I started finding out that she was one of the more timid ones in the pack. Tucker's the one that's more timid than her. Uh, Liz never really stood out. It was Sue that did, always did. Liz is just as confident and friendly and everything I'm looking for in a puppy as Sue is except she just didn't have that little bit of an extra flair that I liked in Sue. A little bit of a dramatic just goofy pup. Uh, she's, she's a little more serious but as far as confidence and as far as went a little bit of work they showed on the ducks and not being scared of the ducks. She was my second pick. Peggy would have been my third pick but we didn't get down to Peggy. We just got Lizzie, huh? Liz has always been one of the bigger puppies. She's always been the biggest female. She was the biggest puppy of the whole litter at one point. Uh, she's not anymore. Jake is, I don't know, two ounces out of her. She's always been one of the more calm puppies in the litter. Also second behind Jake. Uh, as far as when we would trim toenails or anything, she was always the one of the most relaxed ones. So this next section will be just a time limit, a timeline of pictures from the one day old to eight weeks. She's nine weeks now, nine weeks yesterday. She seems to be really liking kids so far, as you can see in the next couple pictures and video. So I'm really happy about that. She's not timid, she's really friendly. When I brought her to town a few times, I brought her twice. She just likes everybody she sees. She's not like super outgoing and pulling up to everybody. She actually likes to sit back and watch them for just a couple seconds and then she goes forward and wants to say hi. And I don't 
encourage my puppies to say hi to other people or their dogs. But I want to know that they are fine saying hi to other people and other dogs. I don't want them to be scared. And some of that's training, some of it's not, some of it's just genetic. So I really like what I'm seeing in her. She's not showing any fear. She's just showing a little bit of caution, I guess. She likes to sit back just for 10 or 15 seconds and look before she goes up to greet people. Which is totally fine with me. And from now on, she's probably not going to be allowed to greet people just because I don't like that. I want her to see me as the best of everything and not everybody else. So I've been taking her around to do chores with me uh, by herself because a lot of times I would just bring the whole litter. So I started taking her especially by herself and even coming in the milk room with me. But that's not going to happen anymore as you'll see in this clip. <laughs> Okay, Minx. Time to go. You ate it all, pig. You better not go in there. Pip squeak. Nope. What? Yeah, come on. So I thought. Come on. Good girl. There you go. She has a little too much work ethic already, so she won't be allowed in the milk room until she has more control. And I can get her to stay in one spot and not chase the goats. But I sure love to see it. I just. She's just way too young to be practicing that sort of stuff. If the goats ever decide to turn on her or anything, and besides that, it's harassing the goats, and they aren't going to want to be coming in this milk room. You can see she's like her mama Ginger. This was Ginger at 10 weeks versus Liz at 8. Get up. Get out. with her on anything so far. Um, I, I guess a little bit of her walking on a leash just once when we went to town. And mm, mm, starting to learn her name a little bit I guess. She All the puppies come when I say puppies so I don't have a huge incentive to try teaching her name yet. I just say puppies and they come. Uh, but she is learning. I've just been training her just to follow a lure. I worked a little bit on luring her down, which didn't go too well. I haven't done that again. But otherwise, we really haven't done much. I still have six puppies, so, you know, I'm still kind of taking care of all of them. I haven't really selected her out as uh, doing stuff with yet. I, I have somewhat, just not nearly as much as I will once the rest of the puppies go home. There are several things I want to train Liz to do. She's not just going to be cowed up. Obviously the herder part will be her cow dog part. The helper will be like her carrying stuff for me and things like that. Cool. Oh, kind of like service dog tricks. I just call them tricks because she's not a service dog. And obviously the friend is my little friend. Yeah. Don't need any special training to do that. I plan on tra trick training her and stuff too. I, I never did get very far with her mom, Ginger, uh, as far as being the helper part because she
she won't carry anything. I'm still trying to figure that out. Also, she'll be my helper if I can ever figure it out, but I am having the worst time of my dog training history trying to get that dog to bring things to me or carry things. I just, I don't know. I've tried this method and that method is not working. I'm really going to spend more time with her imprinting that on her at an earlier age and carrying things and see if it goes better. The helper part will also be scent training. I want to train her to find duck eggs. Uh, we have a lot of trouble with the ducks laying their eggs out in the grass where we can't find them. And maybe shed antler training, stuff like that. Again, that'll be the reason why I haven't done that with Ginger is because she won't retrieve. I mean, she loves playing fetch, but trying to get her to retrieve anything that's not her tennis ball. Fat chance. It, it's not happening. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to try and get Liz started on stuff earlier and hopefully it'll imprint better.